Um, here is exercise set two. Um, the answers are posted. So if you if you went and jumped to that, um, that's okay too. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to get that out there in case you wanted to, to look at it. But um, so essentially what I'll do is uh, we'll do this sort of a similar thing from yesterday where I'll, I'll say, okay, let's look at a few of the questions, give you some time to, to look into it. Um, and then uh, and then come back, go over them, and then go over a second set. So um, our first bunch of questions is we start with the true false. So answer that question. And then we have um, a few um, formulation coding problems. So um, coming up with a uh, um, coming up with a bit bit of code. Um, talking about uh, something that's kind of important for batteries called depth of discharge, modeling that with formulation and code, and then um, uh, something else about the next question about like, hey, let's 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 have some more restrictions on our on our problem. So um, work through these problems, and so we're at a little after twelve o'clock. So I think we'll give about maybe um, ten minutes, and uh, and then go through those, go through the answers for those. Um, and then after that is some um, fun uh, modeling with binary variable questions that aren't related to the energy problem, but relate to the to the topic that I was talking about how, of how the logic needs to work um, with binary variables. So let's um, just take about 10 minutes to work through this first section of questions. There we go. And full screen. Okay. Oops, scroll down. So um, let's go to completed ones. That would make, oops, wrong tab. That's, that's supposed to be the completed ones. So I'm just going to do this. Completed. Success. Okay. So, um, First question is suppose the full solar forecast for the week totaled more energy um, than demand. In this case, it's guaranteed that no, nothing will be need to be bought from the grid. So it's sort of the reverse of what we just had, um, but the answer is still false. Um, and for the reason the reason that is, I didn't give you enough information to really make like a, a true, true uh, conclusion or a true conclusion that it is true. Um, but we also have we have things like energy loss. Um, we have things uh, like battery capacity um, that that can get in the way of such things. So we don't know for sure. Um, if we had unlimited battery and we had, um, you know, if we had unlimited capacity, if we had uh, the if the ba each battery can do uh, can charge or discharge an unlimited amount, then yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, then and we didn't have to worry about loss. Then yes, we would be fine. But we have all of those things to consider. So, um, oops. so let's move on to the formulation and coding part. It's taken its time. Uh, so this is essentially just uh, bits and pieces of the original um, uh, battery problem. Um, and then I left some, uh, left some of the code here for the variables, just so you can copy paste things. You don't have to go back and forth. Um, make, make things a little bit easier. So um, question two was uh, write a line of code that sets the objective coefficients um, for the um, for the first version of the energy storage problem using add bars. That's something that we did yesterday where we just where we just um, added added in one argument uh, to the add bars command and it worked. Um, and it, it worked, but I mean, it worked, it, it added the objective coefficients um, for objective functions. So we didn't need to actually define, we didn't really need to use set objective after. And then also write that to a file named model.lp. So um, the easy way to do this is just to say, uh, add bars over time period. So it's just copy pasting, but we're adding in this little part right here where we just say objective is one. So that's setting the coefficient for each of these values to be one, which is what is true in the other version that we had. 
And to look at the model, if you write model.lp, if you're in Colab, um, oops, not this one. If you click on this little folder, I need to run this, um, then it should, at least it did before, hopefully it doesn't make me seem weird. There it is, model.lp, and it downloads the file here. So we can download it, open it up, and it's gonna take me to my text viewer, um, which is, so this is the, uh, this is the LP file, which again, remember from yesterday, sort of really um, shows the formulation um, and it really shows it, it expands all the summations and everything. So you could really see what's going on. And we see that we still have minimize and then we have a coefficient of one for each of our grid values. So that is exactly what we wanted. Uh, question three, uh, depth of discharge. Um, essentially it, that puts a restriction about how far you can discharge a battery. Um, and this is something that is, is, uh, is relevant, um, for, uh, maintaining the health of batteries. If you, for certain types, if you adhere to this well, um, and you're not, you're not constantly charging or discharging a battery down to zero, and then consistently doing that, that helps with the overall health of the battery. It'll keep its charge longer. Um, and it'll also just, uh, it'll take a lot longer till it, the battery is there ultimately needs to be replaced. So let's formulate, um, a constraint that would represent this saying that, Hey, we can't be below a certain, uh, 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 we can't be below a certain depth of discharge for both batteries combined. So I said over the oh, for both combined, let's let's combine them two together, not individually. You can have this individually if you wanted. It would be a slightly different constraint. But um, saying like let, let's this is sort of maybe like you're allowing it to happen a little bit, but you're not all of the time type of thing, um, which sort of which you can argue makes some sense. And it is less uh, it is less restrictive of a constraint because you can allow a particular battery to go uh, below that threshold and that's okay. Formulation wise, um, we need to add up the, the state of our battery and the state of our battery must be greater than or equal to one minus the depth of discharge. So the depth of discharge is how far you can go down. So what's remaining of the capacity is, is if we have 70% depth, that means there's 30% left. So 30% of our total capacity. Uh, in Groby Pi, uh, we, we already sort of defined the model above. Um, so I'm just going to add the variable that is important, which is state, um, and then the depth of discharge constraint, um, quick sum uh, of the state for B and batteries. Again, the quick sum part here represents the summation greater than or equal to. Um, I didn't, and I simplified this. So it's 0.3 times the sum of the capacity. For uh, for the B and battery, so this part here, whoops, this part here needed to be rewritten slightly because um, we have a dictionary up above. Um, so making it into a list um, and then summing over that, and then for each time period t. Um, I did mention like to consider the initial state above. Um, cheated a little bit here just to make it a little bit easier because uh, initially our batteries were empty. Um, in the first, and so therefore, immediately we would violate this constraint if we didn't have an initial value here. So I, I changed the initial to 20 and 30, um, and that satisfies this, this constraint initially. So if you were to say, um, oops, I think I, oh, I, I already made a copy-paste error in this, in this, so sorry about that. Um, as I see the same formula twice. Um, okay. Uh, but anyways, now that I saw something there, but, uh, so essentially, um, yeah, we, we need to make sure that we have, um, the sum of the batteries is greater than that, that part for each time period. And if we started out with zero in our, you know, then, then we would, that may lead, that would probably lead to, um, uh, an infeasible model. So, um, for this part, let's, Get rid of this because this is a boo boo on my part. Um, so the start of each day, um, we're requiring that the battery must be half or at least forty percent full for each battery individually. Um, the type time periods for the start of each day are thirty, sixty, ninety, one twenty, one fifty. Um, 
Uh, and don't worry about the solar forecast nor anything that we happened before. This is sort of a, a, a completely new problem. So let's actually oops, oops, let's see if I can, there we go, do this. So we want, um, this is what the constraint looks like in Groby Pi. And since I copy pasted things incorrectly before, let's just put this in here. Make sure we're good on time. Ooh, actually, we're kind of running low on time. Um, so uh, extra homework assignment, let's call it that. Um, actually write the right formulation in here and uh, it'll be updated and I'll push this to the GitHub immediately. Sorry about that, folks. So um, we have just a few minutes left. Um, sorry, I'm running over time. Uh, take a few minutes to look at how you can model with binary variables. Um, I'll give a couple minutes and then, or actually, um, yeah, since we're... Uh, pretty much at time already. Um, I'll just sort of go through the answers. And if you really want to go over it yourself, then, you know, maybe earmuffs for a few minutes um, and, and then come back to the recording uh, later. But I want to make sure that I get this to get this out there. So um, the modeling with binary variables, um, we have five light bulbs. Um, and we're going to say let yi equal one if light bulb i is on and zero if it's off. So there's an equivalency there um, for i is one through five. Um, we want to model the following statements using bi those binary variables and then uh, inequalities and uh, uh, equal signs. Um, and then all the questions are independent of each other. So just sort of take them one by one. So no more than three light, three of the light bulbs can be on. That means when you sum over the binary variables, it could be no more than three. So it must be less than or equal to three. Uh, light bulb two or light bulb three must be on. Doesn't matter which one it is, we need at least one of them on. So the sum of two and three must be greater than or equal to one. Uh, if light bulb one is on, then light bulb five is also on. So again, zero, one. We got. We want to think about how you know how whatever happens on the if part, how that forces something to happen in the then part. So if light bulb one is on, that means this is one. Necessarily makes y five one has to be for this in, uh, for this inequality to hold. If light bulb one is off, this is zero. We have no requirement of light bulb five at that point. So zero can be less than or equal to zero or one. So you sort of see how, how we're really modeling this logic of when light bulb one is on, we must require five. But if it's off, then we have no requirements for this part. If light bulb one is off for question seven, light bulb three is on. Uh, so here we need this one minus that we had before. So if if one is off, meaning this is zero. We still have a one on the left-hand side, necessitates a one on the right-hand side, which is light bulb three is on. If light bulb one is off, then also then two is also off. Same idea, this being zero requires the left-hand side to be one. And then for this to match, this side has to be one, which makes Y two zero. And then you can simplify the algebra um, to say, oh, well, this is an equivalent way of writing that. And if you're used to like doing truth tables and stuff like that, um, you may remember like the, the contrapositive of a conditional statement, you know, negate the, the back, ne negate the end part becomes the front part, you know, negate the then becomes the if, negate the if becomes the then. Um, that's the contrapositive. That's exactly what we have modeled right here. Um, light bulb two and light bulb four are in opposite on-off states. So this is a little bit more restrictive. So essentially you're saying this is an if and only if. Um, if light bulb two is on, then four must be off. So if this is one, this must be zero. And if this is zero, meaning it's off, then light bulb four must be on, meaning it's one. So this, th this, is, a, uh, this is where an, an equality comes into play. And then you can write it differently um, if you wanted to and just say, well, this is requiring one of these to be on at all times. And then the last question is, if any light bulbs one through four are on, then light bulb five is also on. So 
Um, uh, so one through four here. So if we sum over all of these, that gives us if any of them are on. So if, if any of these are one, at least one, that's our, our, our uh, if part of our statement, then Y5 must, must be on as well. So if this, if this Y1 is positive, this one is one, then that also that forces this to be one as well. But it could also be the case, I said, if any of them, not exactly. So it could be the case that all four of these are on, in which case to have an actual, to have a, a, a true uh, constraint here, I need to have this value of four. It doesn't need to be exactly four, it can actually be higher. Um, and th that'll still work. But if this was like three or two, or we didn't have, this was one, that would set an additional amount of restriction on these variables here. So if this was three, that means I can only have three of these on. If it was two, that means only two of them. If this was one, that means only one of them. But I was like, if any, so, so you sort of see how you need to be very specific about um, some of these coefficients when you're modeling these problems. Um, so that puts us pretty much right at the time. Sorry about uh, not being giving you enough time to go through all of these um, on your own. Um, but uh, I hope that was at least helpful if you if you uh, heard me go through it. Um, so what's coming up next is um, a video um, of Hassan talking about the the cool problem that we're going to be spending the rest of the day on. So um, feel free to shoot more questions and and uh, I'll be able to answer those in the chat. So thank you all for. Um, hopping in with me. This is this is the end for me. Um, I'll be officially handing it over to Hassan for the rest of the day, but I still will be in the chat and I still will be available for questions and maybe chiming in here or there. All right. Thank you all.